The very first coding interview was pretty okay. I understood what the interviewer was saying. Uh, he communicated clearly. I understood what he expected, what was the prompt, what is the input, what is the output. That was good. Second interview sucked. Hi, and welcome back to Holistic Developer channel. I'm Anna, the host of this channel. In this video, I want to share with you my experience interviewing with Google. It was a Google on-site interview. I actually had a Google interview before it was on the Google campus in California. It was last year. This year around, this year around, this time around is different. I did get a Google on-site interview, but because we are during pandemic, it was a virtual on-site interview with Google. So hopefully that's why you clicked on this video to kind of get some information about the process, how was it, and I'm planning to answer all of those questions. I will try to do this video <laughs> as concise as possible, and if you want to get more specifics, feel free to drop a comment in the section below. Let's address the elephant in the room, and that is how did I get an interview with Google this time around? And that was during my job seeking marathon, when I was applying to many, many different job uh, postings that I was finding online. And if you're following me for a while, you know that I did a social experiment when I, where I applied to over 100 software engineering jobs. And during that time, I applied to three positions with Google, and I did that using their web page where they post roles um, that are available at Google. And I do have a filter there that results in job alerts being sent to my to my email whenever something that matches the filter is sent to, uh, to, uh, to my <laughs> email. Oh my God, I need to focus. Uh, so uh, I applied to three jobs, nothing was happening. And I remember that I was getting to somewhere towards the end of my social experiment, I was about to apply to, I was uh, somewhere at the mark of 90 uh, applications or something like that. And it was a Sunday, I remember really well the moment when that happened. And I just, just got an email from the, the filter or the job alert that I did on the Google site. And that was something that was some really close to my background and my experience and what I was actually interested in. And I was like, yeah, I applied to three jobs so far and I didn't hear anything from them. It's like, oh, I'll apply one more. What's the harm in that? So I decided to apply to that, to that particular job. And um, I was sure that I won't hear anything from them, but I decided to, to try it, right? So uh, guess what? Next morning, Monday morning, around 6, uh, 6 a.m. or something like that, I did he do hear back from a recruiter saying that uh, they, um, they found my application, um, they would like to move forward uh, with my <laughs> application and um, let's schedule a talk. So um, that's how I got the, the interview. I applied on the site um, and I heard back from a recruiter. So what was the next uh, thing in the step? Obviously we chatted, we got to, to talk about what I'm interested in, where, what are my strengths. She sent me a list of questions that I needed to answer and so on. So um, what I want to focus on is the fact that after we chatted, after I answered a few questions, she determined that I can move on next to the on-site interview. I didn't had the technical interview in between, so I just had a phone screen with them and the next step in the process for me was to get on-site interview with Google. And that was exactly the same last year when I was interviewing with Google. I didn't have the technical interview with them either. I skipped that last year as well. So how was the interview, the Google interview? Actually, I had five interviews scheduled for the same day and the interviews I had with them, there were two coding interviews, two system design interviews and one interview that was behavioral interview. Coding interviews and the behavioral interviews were all 45 minutes and the system design, both of them were one hour interviews. So let's start with the very first interview and it was a coding interview. It's everything online, obviously, and the interview is via a Google Doc. So in advance, I was uh, sent an email with instructions when we will meet, what time, when are the breaks, and Google Doc links for every single interview that were happening that day. So for the very first interview, I opened the Google Doc interview that was shared for the first interview and I joined the meeting. 
obviously I'm <laughs> starting to chat with the interviewer, uh, we introduce ourselves and next thing is I'm getting the problem that is being asked of me to solve and um, I'm supposed to solve that in the Google Doc, which I think is not a surprise for anybody that that's what is happening right now during pandemic, during a Google interview, you, sh you use a Google Doc. The problem was pretty straightforward. Honestly, in my opinion, it was simple. Um, it was nothing complicated. Um, and I did what is recommended to do to understand the problem, ask clarifications, clarify any assumptions, see any edge cases, try to explain, walk a, a simple example, create a pseudocode, communicate out loud with the <laughs> with the interviewer and then start doing the code. I did that and I tested the code at the end and after that the interviewer decided to complicate a little bit that problem and he modified it slightly and complicated it to ask me how would I uh, solve that problem in that case. So I did solve that in that case. However, because we were running out of time, the second complicated version of that. I didn't had any strategy or sort of code. I asked, should I start coding right away? And he said, yes, in the best interest of time. So when I started to do that, um, towards the end, I skipped one step. Um, so um, when I was walking through the code, I realized that I made that mistake. And there was another bug that I oversaw and he pointed out and I realized that, yes, I made that mistake um, and we ran out of time. So that was the second, uh, the first, really first interview with Google. The next coding interview with Google was uh, with a person that sadly, unfortunately, I could not understand practically anything that he was saying. Like I had to double guess every single or every third word that he was saying. Uh, I didn't have anything against that person. It was like the first interview that I had, he was also not a person who was born or his English uh, is the first language, but I could understand that person, no problem. The second interviewer, I could not understand him for the life of me. And uh, he gave me a question, a binary tree question. And the question was pretty kind of straightforward. What was not clear to me it was how like the what is the expected output and i was trying to ask the interviewer like what do i return do i return the node or do i return it in a different structure and he was explaining something and i could not understand what he was saying and i was trying i asked him to to write it in the document so he was writing that in the document and the next time i i already had kind of okay i think that's what you're saying so i'm restating what I understood he's asking of me. And then he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he changes it. So so first time around, he shows me that he's expecting the results to be a 2D array. And then when I'm trying to clarify that, um, and he starts to answer my clarifications and he's modifying their answer to be an object. And it's like, okay, do you want it to be an array or do you want it to be an object? And he's like, no, I don't want it to be an object. But he has it, um, the, the way that I see it in the document, it's clearly an object. I specified that I will do JavaScript. So the very first thing that you have to do is kind of specify what language you're going to use. And I specified that it's a JavaScript. I asked if it's okay. He said, yes, it's okay. Same was true for the very first interview. And like, and we are going back to the conversation and like, no, it's not an object. And it's like, okay, what it has to be. Like I, I was not understanding what is expected result. Like I understand what is the prompt, but it was not understood to me uh, what is the result. Like, do we want to return a Boolean? Do we want to return, like what is the structure we want to return? And I could not understand for the life of me what he's trying to, to, to expecting the result. Like the first time I asked, it was a 2D array. Next time when I'm asking, it's an object and I'm clarifying that and I'm just like, is that correct what I'm understanding? And then he's like, no, that's not correct. So he's like, okay. And I look at the clock and it's like, we already 20 minutes passed in the interview and we, I still don't understand what is expected of me to return. And uh, we started to chat and it's like, and I, I at that time I understood um, after different conversation, I understood that he's confusing the thing that I'm thinking about object. Like he thought ob object as an object in Java and I was doing JavaScript. I was plain old JavaScript object. 
um, and I explained to him that, and he's like, okay, yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, you can return it like that, and then we were talking and talking, like, so, how, like, what, what is your result, like, what will we return, and I explained to him, like, here's what I'm planning to return, but like, yeah, but what it will be in there, so I was not, like, it was not clear to me, it's like, okay, define the tree, and I started to define the tree, and it's like, no, 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 not, don't define the tree, um, like, what is the class of the tree? And it's like, okay, do you, are you asking me to define the tree node? He's like, yeah, yes, yes, define the tree node. So I defined the tree node and he's like, yeah, that's what I wanted. So that was the very first thing that I understood what he wanted of me to do. And that was already uh, at about 35 minute mark. And it's like, okay, I, we have a little bit of time left. And it's like, I started to explain to him, like, here's what I'm thinking to do. And is that the expected result? And he's like, yeah, yes, let's do that. So I started to implement the code. I implemented the code recursively because it's a binary tree. And I started to return the, the object. And I remember that I created, I, I had a bug. Um, I made the mistake that the key, I didn't like in JavaScript, the key cannot be something that is not uh, a string or a symbol, right? But I made it the node to be the key. And I kind of realized that afterwards, but I made a mistake. So long story short, that was a really, really frustrating interview for me because I didn't understand what the person said. His accent was really, really hard to understand. And that I had that happening to me before. And I tried to stay calm. I start, I tried to communicate well, but that was just a something that drained my energy a lot and I was like unable to to focus clearly and it was disappointing to be honest and I was not able to solve that without any errors in a timely matter so I just had started something I started the recursive call I started to do the object how it will look obviously I had the bug there but I didn't realize it at that time so that was a disappointing experience. Moving on to the next interview, um, it was the behavioral interview, and that was like probably seven interview questions, seven behavioral questions, and I did really well at all of them. And when I heard the feedback from uh, from my interviewing Luke, I did really well at the behavioral questions. I, I provided the kind of the the answers that show the signal that I do have the Googliness. <laughs> I passed the Googliness interview. So um, moving uh, past those interviews, after that, I had an hour break for my lunch. And uh, the fourth interview was a system design interview. Obviously, we start with, with our introduction. The person who was interviewing me was a really, really nice person. He asked me to design something. Uh, and initially, I was, okay, what part do we design? What are we doing? And it was honestly an interesting problem. And I really liked it. So we started to design. We started to talk about different consideration. Think about this. What should we do in this case? Like, like normal system design, right? So if you're curious about what is a system design like, you can probably look at grokking system design interviews. That's um, indicative and it will kind of that's a good representation and algo expert system design is actually a good representation of how what kind of question i was asked during that um, interview and again straightforward none of those questions that are answered in algo expert or grokking system design none of the um of those answers or examples that i provided there were asked during the interview but it's something that just to have something general in mind and i started to answer different questions we talked about different considerations what we should do starting to do an mvp started to design all the components and something happened i don't know what happened um like i don't know the the meeting uh, disappeared the document that we were doing during the system design and it was a google document even though i was i was told that it will be a google drawing i uh, disappear like um I could not see it. Uh, I did still continue to hear my interviewer, but I could not see him. I could not see the meeting. I could not see the document. And I tried everything to get it back and I couldn't. Um, and at that time, uh, I like before that happened, I was working on the design and sharing my screen with uh, the interviewer because uh, when you do in the Google document, when you do insert drawing, as soon as you start drawing, 
the drawing that they're doing, it's only visible to you, not to the interviewer. So he asked me to share the screen. I started to share the screen and I draw a few forms. I draw the kind of the client, the server, the database, uh, and like all the components that needed for that system design. And something happened. I have no idea what everything disappeared and I could not save the document. I could do nothing. And um, then he asked me how would I <laughs> how would I scale that? And I was not able to draw anything. I could not see what's going on. And I was trying to concentrate. I remember I tried to concentrate as best as I could, but that was kind of distracting to trying to figure out what's going on. And he was telling me, can you save the document? And it's like, I don't have access to it. I can't. So we ran out of time. The problem, uh, he told me that as soon as I have time to, to recreate the design that I had, to and to send him that he provided me his contact information and for me to send that document. So uh, that's what I did. Uh, I saved it, like I recreated it and I sent it. I didn't recreate it with something extra or something we didn't discuss. It was exactly how I remembered it. Moving on to the very last interview and that was the fifth interview of the day and it was a system design interview as well. And that interview was uh, something that I was not prepared for, uh, to be honest. I knew it's a system design, but again, I was prepared for something like it was an algo expert, like let's say system design or the grokking system algorithms or grokking system design interview questions. And it was nothing like that. It was completely different. And that kind of threw me off. And it was something that... Uh, it was on multi-threading and I haven't done or haven't repeated multi-threaded where I didn't revisit multi-threaded for a while. So multi-threading was something that <laughs> kind of, I was not able to do anything about it. So the question itself, honestly, it was not complicated. Um, like what you needed to do, it was not complicated. Um, if I would have, before the interview, if I would have prepared for multi-threading and remembered everything about it, I would have been able to answer the questions that were being sent to me, but I was not, not able. So in that case, it was not interviewer's <laughs> problem that I don't understand him or that there was a technical problem or anything like that. Everything was okay in that aspect. In this case was my problem that I could not remember a lot of stuff or mul of multi-threading. So that was my fault. That was where I failed. And yeah, those were the five interviews that I had with Google. So if I were to just summarize all of them, the very first coding interview was pretty okay. I understood what the interviewer was saying. Uh, he communicated clearly. I understood what he expected. What was the prompt? What is the input? What is the output? That was good. Second interview sucked because I could not understand practically anything that the interviewer was talking about. It was not clear to me what was the expected result. I understood what is the, the input, but I didn't understand what form does he want the output to be, and we were not able to communicate. Third interview, the behavioral interview went well, no issues there, we were able to talk, answer questions, everything went well. Fourth interview was started well, everything was okay, and then technical issues started. I could, I could not hear him clearly, so I remember him leaving the meeting, joining the meeting again. Um, the connection started to be really weird. I could not hear him, and he said that every time I spoke, he hears an echo of himself, and he could not hear me. So those technical issues were, oh my God, it just ruined everything. The, the problem was good. I could solve the system design. It was good, but the technical problems just ruined everything. And the fifth interview, <laughs> it was everything okay, no technical issues, communication was okay, I could understand what he's trying, what, what he's asking of me, what I need to do, but in that case was me, <laughs> like my uh, recollection or my, my memories and my knowledge was the problem at that <laughs> fifth interview. So overall, it was an interesting interviewing um, um, loop and at the end of the day I was exhausted and I just like was fried. So yeah, that was my second <laughs> time interviewing with Google, on site with Google and yeah, um, I don't know what to say. Hopefully when you're interviewing with Google or any other company, hopefully you don't get into a situation when you don't understand what the interview is talking about 
it's like you cannot solve something that you don't know what's being asked of you. Hopefully you don't get any technical issues. It was sad. Uh, the interviewer was really nice. I was we like an interesting problem. I knew how to solve it, but the connection was horrible. Um, I could not hear him clearly. He was dropping. And I had to leave the meeting, come back. Um, then the meeting kind of disappeared. It was just weird. And the very last one was me <laughs> sucking. So I like being not prepared. Like that's my fault, nobody else's fault. So hopefully that provides you some clarity and some perspective and provides you with opportunity to prepare for those things if you are ever in that situation. Did you find anything surprising in this video? Is it the video what you expected or not? Please leave your comments. I would love to read them and hear your thoughts. And I appreciate you saying till the end and until the next time. Bye bye.